Hey everybody, welcome back for another long-awaited uh, flip lesson. Today, we're going to be doing section 3 of chapter 12, where we talk about DNA replication. But in this lesson, you guys should know these things and these key terms. Okay. So to start off, we're going to start talking about copying the code, or what rep DNA replication actually is. All right. And it's important to remember that before a cell divides, it needs to duplicate its DNA in a copying process called replication. Okay, so replication is the actual process of copying the DNA. Um, right, we know that this takes place during the S phase of the interphase, uh, is when a cell copies its DNA. And we also know that this is crucial because a cell, for example, this one here that's doing asexual reproduction, needs to pass down an equal amount of DNA to both daughter cells. If it doesn't, if they both get half, they're both going to die. Uh, if one gets half and one gets nothing, that one cell is going to die, right? Both daughter cells need an exact copy of the DNA in order to do all the life processes necessary to survive, okay? Um, when we talk about the DNA strands that are being copied, right, it's said that they are complementary, okay? That doesn't mean they tell each other they look nice or their new pair of jeans look really cool, right? That means they go together. All right. Complementary, like we talked about before, there's two strands, right? Um, each strand, they come together to form a double helix. And each side of this double helix is going to have a complementary nitrogenous base, part of that nucleotide. Okay. Every adenine, right, A, is going to be paired with a thymine, letter T. Every guanine, G, is going to be paired with a cytosine, letter C. So both these sides of the DNA are complementary. They're an exact copy of one another. And while the, the exact letters may not be the same, the information's the same because you have the same pairs on both sides. All right, so in order to copy this DNA, in order to replicate it, it's important that we have these two identical strands in this double helix. All right, so let's talk about the replication process. There's a couple steps and there's a couple uh, crucial molecules involved. If I showed you this molecule, DNA helicase, right off the bat, you'd be able to tell me it's an enzyme because it ends in ACE. All right? And DNA helicase is really the first uh, step in this process of replicating. And what helicase does, it's an enzyme that literally, like a zipper on your jacket, unzips the DNA molecule. So let's say this H, this big circle letter H here, stands for one enzyme molecule of helicase. What it's going to do is actually travel up the middle of this DNA molecule, and just like a zipper when you unzip your jacket, it splits the two ends apart, okay? And now we have two separate strands coming together. Like we said about before, these strands are complementary, so every G on this side has a C on this side. Every A on this side has a T on this side, okay? Uh, we... It's complementary, right? The letters, the letters go together. There's the same information now on both sides. What's going to happen after this helicase opens up the DNA and splits it is we have another enzyme called DNA polymerase come through and actually starts to build a new strand of DNA, right? As we see down here, this DNA polymerase now travels down the open strand of DNA and starts adding nucleotides in the correct order. Right? So let's say this enzyme P here represents DNA polymerase. It's actually going to work down the outside here. You have another one on this strand now that works down. And everywhere that there was a G, it's going to put a C. Everywhere there was an A, there was a T. So you start seeing it starts to build. T, A, T, A. C, it puts a G. Same thing on this side. This polymerase works its way all the way down the DNA molecule until it fills all the information. Uh, and every nitrogenous base nucleotide has a complementary base pair. All right. The last section uh, that gets done is called a telomere. All right. And we've talked about these before. And telomeres are actually kind of like DNA extensions on the end of a DNA molecule as you get to an end of a chromosome. So what actually happens is at the end of a DNA molecule, right down here, you kind of have a blank section of DNA, right? Just random bases thrown in there. Uh, and this is called the telomere. I like to think the telomere uh, as the little plastic thing on the end of your shoelace, which is actually called an aglet, I believe. 
Uh, so it's kind of like an aglet. And what it does is it actually holds together the end of your DNA, just like the aglet holds together uh, the two ends of your shoelaces so they don't fray. Over time, though, if we look down here at this molecule, let's pretend my red drawing here is the telomere. Over time, it gets starts to break off a little bit. Every time that a cell divides and it replicates its DNA, a little more breaks off, a little more breaks off, a little more breaks off, a little more breaks off. The job of the telomere really is to protect the DNA, okay, the, the part that has information. So this blank copy just protects it because every time a cell divides, you lose a little chunk. So what happens as a, a cell divides more and more, uh, and you start losing more and more of these telomeres, is the last enzyme call, comes in called telomerase, okay, or tel telomerase, right? And it actually adds sections of DNA back into the telomeres to protect the important information here, okay? So this really, this replication process uh, is how DNA is replicated during the S phase uh, in preparation for cell division. And while it's a pretty complicated thing, uh, all organisms, all living organisms do it, and it's really not that simple. Or it is very simple, right? It's not that complicated. There's three easy steps. The helicase comes in first, unwinds the DNA. As it unwinds, the polymerase comes in and creates that uh, duplicate complementary strand, right? We go from one strand now to two strands, okay? And then finally, right, the telomeres are added to the end by telomerase, uh, which kind of protects all this important DNA in the middle. All right, so the last thing to talk about is prokaryotic versus eukaryotic DNA replication, okay? Most important thing here is remember your vocab. Eukaryotic cells, uh, their DNA is kept in a nucleus, right? Where in prokaryotic cells, like in a bacteria, uh, the DNA is usually just floating around in the cytoplasm, okay? Prokaryotic DNA usually floats around a nice big circle like this, um, whereas eukaryotic DNA, as we know, is organized into chromosomes, right? Different living things could have different numbers of chromosomes. Um, the main thing difference besides the structure of it and besides being in a nucleus is that prokaryotic DNA is much simpler than eukaryotic DNA, right, organized into chromosomes. There could be over a thousand times more information uh, in eukaryotic DNA than in prokaryotic DNA. And this makes sense, right? A eukaryotic organism like a mouse is going to need to make a lot more proteins and different functions and multicellular uh, organelles and different functions to survive compared to a single bacteria. So the eukaryotic DNA is going to be much more complicated. Um, and again, it comes back to its structure, right? It's organized into chromosomes, which actually have super coils of DNA in them right, which are made up of even tinier coils. Uh, so the difference in re replication is that for prokaryotic DNA, um, when it replicates, since it's much simpler, you actually start in just one spot, okay, and you'll have two molecules of helicase. One will go around this way, and one will go around this way, and they start to unwind and then copy the DNA, right, because the polymerase comes in and starts building it with the proper nucleotides, copying each strand. Um, so whereas the prokaryotic DNA starts in a single place and goes around, eukaryotic DNA starts in a bunch of different places. Because if you had uh, thousands and thousands of, of, let's say, feet of, of DNA to copy in a eukaryotic, and you start at one place, it would take forever to copy 46 chromosomes, right? 23 pairs uh, worth of information if you start at one place. So in eukaryotic cells, it starts in multiple sites, right? It starts in multiple places on the chromosome to copy the DNA. This makes it go a lot faster than starting in one spot, okay? Um, and that's really the main difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic DNA replication. All right, that's it for today, kids. Uh, so make sure you review, make sure you know your, um, your definitions, okay? Go back, make sure you know the objectives, take good notes. And uh, feel free to shoot me an email or tweet if you have any questions. All right. Thanks again.